I want to be very clear this week about what I am saying <laughs> and what I am not saying. Here, here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that just, you know, kind of this self-help, positive self-talk, being positive is the can is the answer to to all of our spiritual and and relational problems. But here's also what I am saying. As Christians, we need to be more positive in the way in which we the ways in which we think and the ways in which we talk to ourselves and to other people. And I know that probably sounds quite confusing right off the bat. <laughs> It sounds like I'm saying uh, both what I'm not saying and both what I am saying are contradicting each other. But there's actual deep wisdom in the tension between both extremes. See, I, I, I've talked about before in our scripture study community video that I do believe in the power of the spoken word. I do believe that God, whenever he created all things, he spoke into existence all of creation through his words. And I believe that we speak and pronounce blessings and curses over our families based off of what we say about them, what we say to them. We actually can create worlds, create realities in the same way that God did with the words that we speak and with the thoughts that we think. And therefore, there is some truth that if you think more positively and if you speak more positively, that you are creating a world that you live in. But at the same time, it's also true that what I'm not saying is simply all you do is add positivity to a situation, ignore Jesus, ignore everything else, and everything's fine. That's not true either. It's somewhere in the middle. <laughs> you might be thinking like, Shane, why in the world are you talking to us about this? Well, it, it comes from my wrestling with a couple of different passages sprinkled throughout the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is just one of these books that continues to pay dividends for me every time I read it. It is this sage that has gone before us, that has lived life to its extreme, both positively and negatively, and is coming to us like a father to their child, like a parent to their child. And it's saying, let me, let me tell you what it is that I have discovered. Let me tell you what it is that I see. And let me give you some advice about how not to fall off a cliff. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says this, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do, do flows from it. That kind of reminds me of even Jesus whenever he talks about, you know, it's not what we put into our mouths and in our stomach that makes us unclean. It's what flows out of our heart. But here... The, the, the author of Proverbs is saying, listen, you guard your heart with above everything else because what you do flows from it. it. It affects your actions. It creates the worlds that you struggle with, that you benefit from, that you live in for better or for worse. So how do you guard your heart? By what you allow your mind to think, by what you allow your words to speak, by whether or not you dwell more on negativity or positivity, it will change the world you live in. He says this in chapter 14, verse 30. It'll sound a little bit different, but he's still talking about the same concept. It's just this thread is weaving its way through his proverbial sayings. Chapter 14, verse 30 says, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. One of the things I found in my own life is whether I'm dealing with, with family or people in my community or even people at my job, that if I get frustrated to the point of rumination, uh, where, where, where I'm, my mind is constantly dominated by the, the word that was said to me that I thought was a slight, the action done to me that I thought was unfair, the criticism leveled at me, that, 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 or the way in which the person acted that did not give dignity to everyone. If I obsess over those things mentally, it changes my ability to, to sleep. <laughs> it changes my ability to work. It changes my ability to focus on what I can control and to let go of what I can't. 
And the Proverbs author here brings it up. A heart at peace gives life to the body. It actually allows us to rest. But envy, ruminating over negative things, he says, rots the bones. It actually destroys our body <laughs> because it builds an entire world on, a, on you know, a foundation of sand that means at any point the house can fall. Chapter 15, verse 13, he says this, A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. It doesn't just affect our bodies, it affects our soul. Verse 15, he says, All the days of the oppressed are wretched, but the cheerful heart, the positive heart, has a continual feast. He's saying that it is food for your soul, that it feeds you and gives you life. Whenever you are feasting upon a heart that is free from all the negativity that comes with envy, that comes with resentment, that comes with bitterness. Chapter 17, verse 22. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. How do we experience tough or crushed spirits? By allowing the frustrations of the world to dominate our mind, which disrupts our, our, our work and and our rest to the point where we are able to produce nothing of good fruit for the kingdom. Listen, bitterness in our heart, allowing resentment to rehearse in our minds, it actually affects the rest of our body and of our soul. It affects our ability to Sabbath. It affects our ability to engage God. And the Bible is very clear that it is this positivity, this thinking in positive ways, this speaking in positive ways, this refusal for vengeance or for any side of negative thinking to bring us closer to death that actually brings us life. And so here's my question for you to wrestle with this week. When you think of the words of your mouth, when you think of the narratives rehearsed in your mind, do they have a tone of positivity or are they rife with negative, resentful, bitter, pain-induced rages, ruminations? And then ask yourself this, if it is the latter, if negativity is the one that is speaking most loudly through your mouth or in your mind, how are you resting? How are you feeling content? Do you even have moments when you can sit and just be? Because a body and a soul will never be at rest if it is feasting off of the cancerous fruit of negativity. I love you guys. Have a great week.